Uh, this summer, I visited the uh, Dadaab refugee camp in um, in Kenya on the edge of the Somali border, and um, there were at the time about uh, twenty twenty thousand people coming over the border a month. Um, the uh, this had been happening uh, since the beginning of the year, and um, even before then, there were ten thousand people a month coming across. You know, the camps have been open since. Uh, the Somali conflict started about 20 years ago in uh, 1991 and so there people have um, kind of set up normal life I mean there's uh, it, it's it's basically like a very dense village um, but there are um, there are uh, you know people have have their homes um, which I, I think there's there's far too many families there's there's many families living in a single home but um, but they do have uh, you know ho homes made out of uh, you know, daub and wattle, uh, um, mud and uh, and um, and wood and and so and and some bricks in some cases, and um, uh, there. But there there are also shops. I mean, there's even um, you, you know where you can where you can buy basic goods. Um, there outside there's there's markets where uh, emergency food comes. These camps have been around so long, twenty years, that people. At this point, are basically, are you know, are living there. I mean, this is where they live. This is their whole world. Um, and there's about four hundred thousand people in the camps right now. The camps have been closed since two thousand and eight, and so that means that all of the newcomers um, who have been fleeing uh, both the conflict in Somalia and um, the current drought um, are are stuck outside the camps. They have nowhere to they have nowhere to go. They come to the camps because they think that there's going to be food and shelter and medical care and so on for them and that it'll be a safe place. But um, when they arrive, they find that the camps are closed and um, so they're forced to make do on the outskirts and there there they set up um, you know, makeshift um, housing and uh, there's only a few uh, uh, latrine facilities available for them. Uh, they have to rely on trucked-in water. There's no uh, wells or anything like that. And so when I was there, I saw people building their own shelters just out of available materials, whether it was, um, you know, sticks or refuse or discarded uh, aid packaging. That was a, a, a big primary construction um, material that people used. And um, the amount of refugees um, was 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 has really been increasing dramatically. Um, so at the point I was there this summer, there were twenty thousand people and even thirty thousand people crossing the border a month looking for um, looking for refuge, looking for safety. And that's at the point when the uh, when the media really took notice. But this had actually been happening uh, well before this summer. This had been going on for um, six months um, when you were having 20,000 a month, 10,000 a month, and 20,000 a month. And all of last year in 2010, you were still having 10,000 a month. And yet uh, this, uh, this major problem received very, very little um, attention and coverage from the media. Nobody was really paying attention at that time. Now, uh, things have gotten even worse. They've started having cholera outbreaks in the camp. Um, and, and other disease outbreaks, and that shows you that you've really got a complete breakdown. That nothing's working when you when you have a situation like that. I mean, sanitation's not working, water's not working. Um, you have very high levels of malnutrition in the camps, and but once again, none of this is new. This has been going on for uh, months and years.